each year. So this is a whole pig. <laughs> this is really whole. It's not even split in the ha in the half. So uh, I don't really need it split in half because I'm going to make boneless pork chops and that out of it anyway. Most of it will all be boned out. So we're just going to process this pig just as in the whole piece. Hello again. Today we're going to show you how to cut up some pork. This is a boneless pork loin, but it was taken off of a, a whole half a hog, which of course they all are sooner or later, but it's not the cryovac that are vacuum packed. So this is a whole pork loin that's boned out. I boned it out off the, uh, off the whole pig. Boned it out and trimmed it up. So it looks that you can see how it's not all wet like you would normally get out of the vacuum packs. So that's uh, that's a little bit of a difference between vacuum packed meat and um, the the uh, taking it off the whole carcass, so off the whole hog. This was just done yesterday, and uh, I brought it home today into the cooler or into my garage to do it. So this is again is some meat just being cut in your garage. Now I suppose you're all probably wondering too, how do you sharpen a knife with a steel? Well, this is how we would do it. A butcher would do it. But you might want to go like this, just to make it safer. So you see, notice the angle, just draw your knife across the steel. A little bit of pressure on it, you'll know when you got the right pressure. Draw it across the steel, like that. Poke the steel down on the board, and you're just simply just drawing it across. Down. Don't try and go that way. Always down. And don't try this either, because you'll probably cut your hands the first time. Get some real slow practice first, maybe. And it works the same for a little knife, for a smaller knife. And again, you don't need real expensive knife. This is uh, just an inexpensive knife, a Hankel knife. It's probably cost between 10 and $15. It's called a boning knife, and that's all you need. Again, you just sharpen like this. So if you got $300 knives, you probably won't know how to cut meat any better. Try and get the angle the same on both sides. Simply draw it across. You have to thin your knife down though first, like with a stone or a, ste or a grinder if you have a grinder, like a belt grinder, but most people won't have that. And um, so just use a stone to thin your knife down because you have to get it thin or else it won't sharpen. Okay, let's cut up this pork loin. So what am I going to make out of this? Well, we can make pork chops out of the whole thing. This is the butt end where the big bone came out of. So I'm going to cut that off just like that. And you can see there's virtually no fat left on it. So I'm going to cut that off and I'm going to make a roast out of that. Sometimes I also make what they call pea meal bacon out of that. And that's also a very good. So now you can either, you can cut it all into chops right away or you can leave it in small sections so you can have a roast or take it out of the freezer and just as it's thawing out so when it's got half the frost in it you can then cut it into chops so I'm going to make a couple roasts off of it for right now look how nice that meat is Woo, beauty then you can just trim the fat off right now if you want throw that into your wild game sausages if you if you're making any or you can actually just freeze it and keep it for later for your sausages too. Or you can render it down and make some lard. And I'm going to just take the camera and go to the other side for a better view. Let's see what it looks like from this side. I'm right handed so it was kind of hard for me doing it that way. So first of all, we're going to take it. Again, that's what it looks like, like so. You can cut it whatever thickness you want. We like not really thick, so this is going to be about just a 3 8 to half inch thick pork chop. When you're slicing, try not to run your knife. So put pressure down, push one way, draw it back. And then you that'll be cut right through. So those again are about 3 8 to half inch thick. We'll eat about probably five in a package. I don't eat a lot, but my wife does. Just kidding. So I'll put four in a package. Maybe five. Maybe six, actually. Because we also have four little dogs. 
Go to feed the dogs. Now, this will be something different. I'm going to make now. So those are just pork chops, boneless pork chops. This is now going to be a butterfly pork chop. So you simply just cut it part way down on that one. On the next chop, cut it all the way through. Then you have a butterfly pork chop. People can fry them just like that. You can put stuffing in them. So that's also a, a very nice piece of meat. So we'll make a few of those. And again, just push the knife. You cut that way, draw it back, and it cuts the other way. Cutting is not pushing straight down, it's actually slicing. So two motions. Down, and back, and then this will be down all the way through. So that is one, two, three, four, so that'll be good for that package. Now when you're cutting, I'll make some more boneless, uh, just straight pork chops. And I forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, when you're cutting, try and make it even. So get the width the same, don't make like a wedge or like offset. You know how the cheese looks like in your fridge half the time? Like a big wedge, four inches thick on the top and three on the bottom. You don't want to do that. It's not nice. So again, there's some nice boneless pork chops. I'll make one more package of those. Butterfly pork chops, I should say, which are actually boneless too. A little pressure all the way through. A little down all the way through. So there again we'll have some butterfly pork chops. But now when I wrap them, I, yeah, I'll wrap them like that. You actually would get, you actually get a better package, I'm not going to. So when you wrap them, wrap them I should say, wrap them just like flat and then you can open them up later. If you want to be really fancy you could probably put a little piece of wax paper between those. Not necessary though. So there, some butterfly pork chops. Now, if you want to really be able to stuff them, what you do, you just take your knife, just poke it down, see it's on an angle there, so I'm not cutting the top of it. So I'm just going to make a pocket halfway in it. Then just to be safe, I'll turn it around. Then I'll do the same thing on this side. So just cut again, same thickness. Don't cut right through the pork chop. I'm just making a pocket right inside the actual meat. Now, if you look, it's not cut through. It's not cut through anywhere, but yet that whole pork chop inside is all hollow. See, I can stick my finger all the way through there. You can see where my finger goes on the outside. So you're just basically hollowing out the whole inside of that pork chop, and that makes it good for stuffing. Then, just cut down, again right through like you would for the other one or for the butterfly. So those are stuffed pork for stuffing pork chops. Again, like that. And keep that cut even again. Okay, that wasn't even. Haha. <laughs> I should practice what I preach, eh? So that's three stuffed pork chops. So again, I'm just hollowing out that middle part. Not cutting all the way through. So there's four stuffed pork chops. The these will just be for regular. Again, cut them down. Now these, you can see how the meat is changing here as compared to that one. Because this is a center cut pork chop here. And this is off what we would call the rib end of the pork chop. So you get a little more fat in it. If you compared it to beef, it'd be like prime rib or ribeye to New York steaks. Yes. The fellow joyfully said,
Okay, boneless pork chops and pork chops. Again, we have two roasts. This is the butt end. This I'm probably going, I'll make pea meal bacon out of it, or corn, you put cornmeal on it. It's called pea meal, but it's actually cornmeal. It's a fresh bacon, so it'll be like a fresh back bacon or a roast.